The Fifth Dome By the year 2100, the climate crisis would put the whole of humanity in check. Vast sectors of the Earth's atmosphere would be damaged over the years, causing changes in the global climate. The atmospheric layers would weaken, generating devastating imbalances. Solar radiation would devastate everything in its path, killing all plant life. Causing a deadly chain, for a great amount of animal life. Any living thing exposed to sunlight was severely damaged within seconds. The Earth would become one big deadly home. Contrary to what was thought, the world temperature would drop several degrees, due to giant holes called icy vortices, through which masses of very cold gases penetrated from space, freezing everything around them. The planet was now a great arid and frozen desert. The aquatic ecosystems could not withstand the radiation or the low water temperatures. Seas, rivers and oceans would freeze. A large percentage of humanity would perish from hunger, cold or solar radiation. Thus, a small group of states, determined to maintain life on Earth, would anticipate the collapse and create giant ecosystems in strategic locations. Chapter 1, The Impenetrable Walls These ecosystems would be created from large translucent geodesic domes. Their structures, made of different minerals, were capable of withstanding any natural disaster and were able to recreate life inside, as it had been at the time, on the outside. Thanks to a highly advanced technology, temperature and radiation were highly controlled. Large machines oxygenated and regulated the gases necessary for life. A large central forest helped to oxygenate the whole place, accompanied by large turbines that distributed the air. The domes were distributed in only four points of the planet. They were strategically located near large lithium deposits and large frozen lakes. Numbered, they were distributed in America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. Only a select part of the population had access to live inside them. Great scientists, physicists, doctors, military, politicians and close friends lived in its five well-defined sectors. The control inside them was strict. Those who did not respect the orders and rules were exiled. The birth rate was controlled, only a certain number of inhabitants was allowed. The postulants to have children had to wait for the death of other inhabitants and they were drawn by lot by turns. No one was allowed to go outside. Only military and technical squads went out to search for mineral and water resources. In order to avoid unwanted entry, the domes had a system by which they were invisible to the eyes of any living being on the outside. Within them, five well-defined sectors were organized. Food sector. Vegetables, fruits, vegetables, and cereals were produced on a large scale. Only the meat of aquatic life was produced, fish and seafood were allowed to avoid greenhouse effects. Medical sector. Vast buildings covered the ailments of the inhabitants. Medicines were produced thanks to the cultivation of specific plants. Militia, technology, and industry sector. Combustion was forbidden, so large parks of solar panels and giant batteries supplied electricity to all the inhabitants. Oxygen was regulated and produced by the large central forest. Any harmful gas was processed and regulated. Large battalions of soldiers protected the site. Iron, lithium and other minerals were processed by large machinery that helped in the production of panels, batteries and all elements for the maintenance and repair of the domes government and political sector. A select group controlled and made all the decisions to follow in the place. No one could be against them and they were the only ones who had contact with the other cupolas. All the cupolas maintained the same order of rules and guidelines. There were no longer individual states, so the balance was total. Sector of inhabitants. Money did not exist. Inhabitants were compensated with food, drinks, medicine, clothing, and energy, delivered by special automatic trucks. As long as they respected and fulfilled their programmed objectives, everyone was compensated. The tasks were diverse and those who did not fulfill a certain quota of objectives were exiled from the cupolas, thrown to their fate in the hostile external environment. Everyone moved around in small electric vehicles and lived in small houses organized in a large ring which surrounded the other four sectors of the dome. 
Recreational activities were controlled by schedules and organized specifically according to each individual's DNA patterns. Chapter 2, The Rebellion of the Forgotten Everything inside the domes was strictly controlled, schedules and activities were organized to achieve the right balance. Thus, food and beverages were processed with substances that appeased and regulated the population, making them docile and flexible to the norms. These substances were created in a large hangar where scientists and biochemists of the highest hierarchy lived together. One of them was Samuel, who, upon discovering the true purpose of creating these substances, could no longer bear to be an accomplice of the oppressive system that controlled everything. For years, he thought, what had happened to the rest of the inhabitants outside the dome? All the time she wondered, is there really no one left alive outside of her? Why doesn't anyone talk about their past? Everyone inside the dome is numb, they no longer remember their loved ones who were left out there. We have to look for survivors, I know they are out there. Immersed in this thought, Samuel decided to create a plan to get out of the dome in search of what he called the Forgotten Ones. Investigating, he could see how in the military sector they had built large flying ships, which could be used to mobilize large numbers of people. The only way to go abroad was by means of mineral resource search parties. As a scientist, it would not be difficult for Samuel to join one of the expeditions. After several sorties with no sign of survivors, Samuel was able to infiltrate a military group sortie. After several hours of travel, the truck stopped at the entrance to a large mine. Everyone got out and entered with boxes of food and drinks, which surprised Samuel because of the amount that was coming in. Pretending to be just another soldier, he took a box and walked behind the platoon. For several minutes they walked, and arrived at a large sector where Samuel could finally verify his theory. There they were, groups of survivors were forced to work inside the large mine. Overcome by consuming the potent substances in the food, they could not know what was really going on there. During the following trips, Samuel would prepare boxes with food and drinks without controlling substances. In this way he would gradually manage to communicate with the Forgotten Ones. Robert was one of them, and he would be in charge of organizing the rebellion inside the mine. With his conscience open, he could remember everything that had happened. How thousands of people were abandoned to their fate, having to look for places where they could survive. Large subway caves were now home to the forgotten. Feeding on insects, fungi, and larvae that were produced in special sectors and drinking water from internal springs. It was practically impossible to leave the caves, during the day the sun's rays were devastating and at night everything froze. No one could go out without special suits, which did not exist there. Many of these survivors had been captured by the regime of the dome and forced to work inside the mines looking for resources for their maintenance. Chapter 3, The Fifth Dome The day had come. To succeed in the rebellion, it was essential to control the military and governmental sector. The plan was underway, with great synchronicity, the movements to be followed were activated inside and outside the cupola. In the first place, they would manage to dominate the military forces thanks to food and beverages processed with consciousness-numbing substances. The entire population of the dome would manage to be awakened, and upon seeing what was happening, would unite to stop the governmental and political order. The dome was already at the limit of its capacity, so in order to bring in the forgotten ones, it was of utmost importance to create a new ecosystem, which could accommodate the new residents. Luckily, the technology was already there to be used, robots, machinery and large panels were ready to start creating the new dome. Groups of miners were moved in to assist the technicians and scientists who day and night guided the construction process. Meanwhile, the forgotten clans were helped with supplies and protective suits. In a few months the work was finished, the great ships finally left in search of the forgotten ones, who were astonished to finally breathe fresh air and could be outdoors without fearing for their lives. Samuel already had allies with whom he could organize his plan to help any survivors. For months, he would manage to awaken more people inside and outside the dome. He would manage to obtain weapons and special suits for the forgotten. 
With the help of some old maps and vehicles, Robert and Samuel managed to contact several clans of the Forgotten, who could not believe that a place like the domes existed and that they were abandoned in such a way. The fifth dome was now a reality, Samuel's dream was partly fulfilled. It was time to continue expanding the ecosystems in order to accommodate more inhabitants and for life to thrive in a more harmonious order. The future of humanity would be uncertain. The quest to repair the damage to the earth would be the new challenge for Samuel and his companions. Reversing the disaster caused by humanity itself will not be easy, but the fifth dome will not stop until it achieves its goal. To recover the earth and give back to its inhabitants their home as it had always been. The end.